Bienvenido. Bienvenido. Hi guys, it's Mr. Moore. Um, you guys made it through the first week. Congratulations. It's nice to see you. If anyone is watching at home, um, uh, we're starting to enter the normal part of our school year. This introductory week is always kind of interesting. and There's lots of things that keep us busy. However, uh, we're just going to jump right into the lesson, which is going to be a lot of adjective agreement, um, several different types of adjectives, and a vocab list in a few minutes. This, which that which is on your screen that you're looking at right now, this adjective agreement thing, um, this is just something that we'll have up from time to time in class. All of this is actually already on the vocab sheet, which you are going to be receiving on Monday. And uh, if you need to go back and add anything to it that you get from, say, this lesson that maybe we don't cover during class, no problem. Feel free to do so. That is the intent of having them in the first place. Uh, one other reminder, real quick, um, the easiest way to get these links to be able to watch this video is just to subscribe to the channel. Um, we talked about in class how to do that. Very simply, go to YouTube. You can uh, type in Spanish 1 colon grammar and vocab. That'll get you the easiest link to my channel. Um, at least you'll be able to watch one of the videos and then you can link to my channel from there and you can, uh, you can subscribe from that point. It has both Spanish 1 videos. It also has Spanish 2 videos. I recognize this is sp supposed to be a Spanish 2 video for our first week, um, our, our second week, first official full week, chapter 1.1, 1 .1, uh, which is adjective agreement and a host of new nationalities and other ways to describe people and things. So that being said, I'd like to go ahead and get started. Um, let me click out of here real quick. Very good. And this is what you're gonna receive on Monday. Uh, Spanish 2, grammar and vocab, gramatica y vocabulario. Um, also, just a quick reminder, uh, parents who are watching at home, feel free to watch this as well. Learn how we're pronouncing things so that you can listen for and quiz your students while we're uh, progressing throughout the course of the year. Um, again, you can watch on anything. You can watch on Apple TV, Chromecast, Roku, um, Amazon Fire, um, as well as all mobile devices, cross-platform, desktops, laptops, and the like. So enjoy your leisure. It'll be a lovely thing that you could watch sometime after dinner. I'm sure you guys would enjoy it. Uh, anyways, capítulo 1.1 or chapter 1.1, introducing yourself and others. And no, this is not meant to be a, uh, a concrete list of every, wing, every way that you could possibly make some sort of an introduction or introduce yourself. This is just a cross-section of vocabulary. Uh, we cover more during class and we see more in our daily exercises. This is really just meant to um, give us uh, an idea of pronunciation and to sort of bring some of the vocabulary to the forefront of, of active vocab. That being said, here we go. Como te llamas? What is your name? The literal translation is how do you call yourself? Kind of weird. Uh, so how you call yourself or what's your name? So there's that difference again between the general translation and the literal translation. Same with the very next question, which is cuantos años tienes? The literal translation is, how many years do you have? Well, we know that it just means, we don't say that in English, so we would just say, how old are you? De donde eres? General translation is, where are you from? Or, from where are you? That is the actual literal translation, too. From where are you? Esta es and este es both mean the same thing. They both mean, this is. Obviously, there's a small difference, and this kind of leads into what we're going to be discussing a little bit later, which is, Esta versus este. This is a feminine vowel. This is tends to be a more masculine vowel. So therefore, esta es is when you would be uh, introducing a friend uh, that is a girl. So esta es mi amiga. This is my girlfriend. Or este es mi amigo. This is my boy who's a friend as well. And then you would just put in someone's name afterwards or something along those lines. Me llamo. My name is. The literal translation, I call myself. Se llama, his name is, or her name is. Literal translation again, um, one calls themselves. That's kind of a weird translation, but that's how it works. The verb ser is your, is your infinitive, that means to be. Uh, we covered that last week, the conjugations thereof. Yo soy, tu eres, el e usted es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos es, y ustedes. Soy, eres, es, somos, soy, son have to have our conjugations of ser down. Uh, also the verb tener, the infinitive tener, which is an IE stem changer. 
tengo, tienes, tiene, tenemos, tenéis, y tienen. Jeremiah Arnold, if you're in the building, Sorry about go that. To see doors. We're doing this in Jeremiah the building, and so Arnold, sometimes we get. Sometimes we get announcements as well. So, uh, moving on. Uh, tengo blank años. That would be I am so many years old. You would put, you would inject some sort of a number in there. In my case, since I'm 41, I would say tengo 40 y un años. All right. Um, if I want to say she is 15 years old, I'd say ella tiene. 15 años. If I want to say he is 20 years old, I'd say él tiene uh, 20 años, and so on. Some different descriptions, just a, a cross-section of vocabulary. Obviously, we have lots of different ways to do that. This is just a, a small number of vocabulary to sort of get the ball rolling. And um, kind of an interesting first one here, uh, but in our chapter, our, for our, our book chapters, the very first uh, descriptive word, our first adjective is calvo, which actually means bald or balding. Calvo. Canoso. Uh, the literal translation is gray-haired. Um, sometimes we say that someone is white-haired or silver-haired, but the, the general translation is someone who has uh, gray or white hair. Uh, como asks the question, um, how? But when you, when you use that in conjunction with the conjugation of ser, like como eres, the literal translation, how are you, doesn't work the same way. It actually means what are you like. So if you use como plus a conjugation of ser, you're going to end up getting a question asking about the general nature of someone. If I say como soy, what am I like? Como eres, what are you like? Como es el, what is he like? Como son ellos, what are they like? So the question como, even though it literally asks how, translates to a what when you're using the verb ser afterwards. La estatura is someone's height. Estatura is height. And you can see that's a cognate. The word stature is a part of that as well. Mediano means average or of average height. And you can see it has the word median in there. So obviously something that is average. And I know that a median is different than a mean mathematically. So math people don't jump on me too much here. But there is a related idea involved there. Mide means Literally, he or she measures, but it's how you would say someone's height. So, ex for example, if you want to say someone were six feet tall, if I want to say he is six feet tall, I'd say, El mide seis pies. He measures six feet. Me, though, would be if, you, if I were saying how tall I am. So, yo mido seis pies y una pulgada. All right, I measure six feet one inch. Madison Gunther, can you please come to the main office for your ride? Madison Gunther, please come to the main office for your ride. Thank you. Very good. Uh, rizado means, um, mean, pelo rizado is like curly haired or wavy haired. Okay, so pelo rizado is someone who has curly hair. So, very good. Obviously, the, uh, the adjectives have to agree in gender and number. So, on some of these, we put either an O or we can make, have them be with an A. So, a pelo rizado, or ella es rizada, she is curly haired, something along those lines. Some different adjectives are nationalities, and we have quite a list of them here, which we need to work on memorizing this week. We'll practice them in class every day. Please practice them at home as well. Argentino is Argentine, someone who's from Argentina. Boliviano is Bolivian. Chileno is Chilean. Colombiano Colombian, Costarricense, Costa Rican, Cubano, Cuban, Dominicano, Dominican, Equatoriano, Ecuadorian, Español, Spanish, or Española, uh, Spanish if you're describing a woman, Estadounidense, means, well, I guess we would sometimes say American. This is an interesting word. The literal translation is United Statesian. It's one of my favorite words, actually, Estadounidense. But we don't call ourselves United Statesian here in the United States. We will sometimes call ourselves uh, United States citizens or from the U.S. or generally American. But it's not very specific considering that there's a South America, a Central America, a North America. Um, you know, Canada is very similar to us as well. So there's a lot. So the word Americano or American can mean a lot of things, but Estadounidense is much more specific. Guatemalteco is 
uh, Guatemalan. Hondureño is Honduran. Moving up. Mexicano, Mexican. Nicaragüense, Nicaraguan. Panameño, Panamanian. Paraguayo, uh, Paraguayan. Peruano is Peruvian. Don't really understand exactly why we've put the V in there when we say that in English, but Peruano would be what we would call Peruvian. Puerto Riqueño. Puerto Riqueño is Puerto Rican. Salvadoreño, someone who's from El Salvador or Salvadorian. Uruguayo is Uruguayan. Uruguayo. Venezolano is Venezuelan. Venezolano. And notice that a lot of these have an optional A at the end. So if I wanted to um, say, for instance, I wanted to introduce my uh, friend who's a girl who's Venezuelan, I'd say, esta es mi uh, amiga Alicia. Ella es Venezolana, as an example. I could even take that one step further. I could, uh, I could introduce multiple people. I could say, estas son mis amigas. Ellas son Venezolanas. So again, we're always thinking about making things agree in both gender and number. Moving on. I'm going to try and move this over for a second. There we go. Now I'm over there. There I am. Okay. Um, adjective agreement. These are just a few rules that we're going to discuss in class. So we're not going to go into too depth with them, too much depth with them right now. Uh, but if this stimulates any questions and you want to come to class with me and just rapid fire on Monday morning, I'll be ready to go. So first rule, uh, general rule of adjective agreement is to use O with masculine nouns and A with feminine nouns. O with masculine, A with feminine. Pretty straightforward. Most adjectives that end in an E or a consonant don't really change. You'll never turn them into an A. For example, if someone um, is, uh, is a United States citizen, I could say El es, es, el es estadounidense. But if I wanted to introduce my friend who's a girl who is a United States citizen, I wouldn't change it to estadounidense. She, it would still remain estadounidense. So ella es estadounidense as well as él es estadounidense. So some things to bear in mind. There are obviously exceptions upon exceptions to the rules. However, if the adjective ends in a dor or dor, or if it refers to someone's nationality, you can add an a for feminine nouns. Example, uh, one that ends in an adjective is the word, oh, where are you? I'll find you. Right here, Espanol, okay? That doesn't end in an O, but I can call uh, a female Spanish person, I can call her Española. Él es Español, ella es Española, as an example. Another one is one that I don't think we have one on this sheet, but if I wanted to uh, describe someone as hardworking, I would call them trabajador. Él es trabajador, ella es trabajadora. So we can add an A if it ends in a D-O-R. Last rule, to describe more than one person or thing, add an S, right here, an S or an E-S, to make the adjective plural. Pretty straightforward, okay? Such as in the phrase, or the, excuse me, the word lapis is the word for pencil. So um, if I wanted to make it pencils, it would be lapises. It ends in a consonant, so therefore I add E-S. If it ends in a vowel, I only add S. For example, uh, the word for book is libro, so Libro becomes libros. Carpeta can become carpetas. So those are some things to uh, bear in mind as well. So that's about it. There's not really a whole lot of difficult grammar in this first official chapter, not a preliminary chapter. We actually technically did more grammar in, uh, in last week's preliminary chapter just to get people uh, moving in the right direction, thinking about verb conjugation, things along those lines. Um, Feel free to watch this as many times as you need. I will keep all of the videos up throughout the duration of the year. You'll have access to them all year, especially come exam time. Um, I hope that you are learning a lot. I hope you're enjoying your first week in school, or at least your first week back to school. Great to hear from all of you. Keep up those comments. Um, subscribe on this channel, or at least have save it as a bookmark or something along those lines so that we can uh, progress together. Nice seeing you all. Ciao. Hasta luego. Hasta lunes específicamente. Bye.